Did you know that only two to 3% of resumes end up resulting in an interview process? Did you know that on average, recruiters are only spending about five to seven seconds reading a resume? And on top of all of that, 75% of all resumes are getting rejected by some kind of application tracking system software because up to 90% of all employers are using this software for their application and interviewing processes. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing three skills that I think you should have on your resume if you're going after these networking roles. And I'll be sharing my own resume as well and how I built it and what's on it and everything as an example or as a sample that you can use. And I also got a job description that I found in Indeed to see if mine would still measure up to this network engineering role, or I think it's a junior networking engineering role, and just see if my resume is still able to measure up to that and if it would have the key skills and everything that it needs to at least make it somewhat through the application process and not get rejected. I do wanna add before we begin, just adding these skills and these key words to your resume is not enough to get you into that interview process because you're gonna to have to be able to demonstrate the core competencies of the skills to ensure that you're gonna be able to stand out amongst the crowd. My goal with today's video is to provide you with fundamental universal networking skills to add to your resume so that you can target the employers that are looking for these networking professionals and ultimately hopefully can land you that job role because if you're not getting that interview process or if you're not getting into the interview process i'm 99.9 .9 sure is going to have to do something with your resume and also make sure that you stick around to the end because i also be sharing one key skill that doesn't have to be on your resume but i think that if you develop it it will definitely help out and boost your chances of getting your resume into the right hands and getting you that job that you really want if you're on that job hunt and trying to break into tech or into a networking role. So if that's something that you're interested in, then hang out, tap in with me, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the content that I'm dropping. I'm dropping weekly videos on everything like this as far as tech goes and networking and make sure that you like the video if you like it because it just helps me out and all of that there so with all that being said let's get started and jump into this video all right skill number one that you need to have on your resume would be network configuration and administration it should go without saying as a network admin or in a networking role you're going to be required to configure something and as far as the administration part goes especially as a beginner if you're a tech or in an admin role you're really going to be supporting some type of network and you're going to be in some kind of operational role meaning that you're going to want to maintain stuff so that's why the administration part comes into play or that skill needs to come into play and when i say administration that could be something again just doing maintenance making sure that the equipment has up-to-date software or even helping a tech troubleshoot maybe a field tech troubleshoot a port that might be down or you may need to shut down a port that's not being used as part of regular maintenance uh, and, and security right because you don't want anybody to just plug into an open port and get access to your network and then the configuring part you're gonna have to know how to configure VLANs or you may need to have to know to configure some kind of routing protocol if something comes up or configure an IP address some basic things right configuring ip addresses and subnet mass uh, figuring trunk ports you might have to configure a trunk port or you might have to configure port security working as a network administrator and provide operational support and making sure that the network is operating as designed is going to require these two major skills so make sure that you have it down there skill number two um, when I first started, I didn't even know about this part of the skill. I, it wasn't really mentioned in the CCNA as far as network monitoring goes. They did go into SNMP, but I kind of, maybe I glazed over it when I was going. But when I hit a real world job and got on the job training and had to deal with network monitoring tools, proprietary and industry leading ones like SolarWinds and everything, that's when it hit me that network monitoring is definitely a skill. That, that you want to put on your resume. Now, network monitoring, you want to include this as a skill because 
every network that you're going to be working on or for people that are looking for somebody to support their network they're looking for performance optimization you can either put that network monitoring or performance optimization these are things that people are looking for these are good skills to have because if you're optimizing the performance of the network that means there's no downtime there's no lag there's no latency or delay in file transfer file transfers or just connectivity to the internet or maybe to a database or anything like that so optimizing performance is is very 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 crucial to support the network so this is definitely something that you want to put down on there as well as optimizing performance you want to be able to understand that how to work on your monitoring and network how to work a trouble ticket right document things or you want to be able to when you're monitoring alert and documenting these alerts and you're investigating them you want to be able to quickly isolate an issue and the key thing to remember if you're monitoring a network this skill requires you to isolate whether an alert is going to be fault related or performance related is something up or down or is something just not working right those two key things will will get your mind into thinking how to develop that network monitoring skill to where you can put it on your resume and you can elaborate on it during an interview or you can build on it if it's already on your resume. Finally, the last skill that you should have on your resume, and there's tons more skills. Again, I don't wanna keep y'all here. I'm trying to be mindful of everybody's time. I don't wanna sit here and bore y'all with this stuff, but I think it is very important to have these skills on your resume. That's why I'm sharing the video. But this last skill, it should go without saying, you need to put network security on your resume as a skill and network security this involves everything from being able to secure routers and switches as well as technologies with security right you want to be able to speak about vpns and and the different types of vpns like a site-to-site -site vpn right as well as being able to talk about experience with firewalls if you don't have any experience with firewalls then you may, you may not be able to put network security on there but that's something that you need to be working towards to put on there and you want to be able to work on some type of firewall or have some kind of firewall experience because that is definitely something that you're going to be working with on a daily basis there's going to be some kind of firewall on any kind of enterprise level network they're going to have some kind of security and you need to just be knowledgeable. Look, again, with all of these skills, you do not have to be a 10 out of 10. I was never 10 out of 10 when when I put these on my resume. You got to at least be like a 6 out of 10 and better yet, an 8 out of 10. That would be the best position to be in. And an 8 out of 10 is somebody that has experience. But 6 out of 10, maybe you don't have production experience, but maybe you got a lot of lab experience. Maybe you got it from your school or, or, or whatever or your tech school, whatever you're going to. Maybe that's how you develop that kind of experience because that's going to put you in that six to seven range. But again, you don't need to be 10 out of 10. You just need to put it on, put that skill on there and just be able to talk about firewalls and talk about these VPN technologies or 802.1x4 authentication for wireless security. You want to be familiar with all of these kind of terminologies and technologies so that way you can communicate that in the interview process if you even make it there because if they pull your resume and they see that and they call you and want to do a phone interview or even an in-person interview and you can't speak to any of these skills that we just went over right now today then it's just going to put you right there back to square one all right so now let's just take a look at my resume just to give y'all a breakdown of what my resume like a network engineer resume looks like and I'll also go over what it looked like when I, when it was a network admin. I'll just break it down and give y'all just, just how I built it and how it came together. So let's go ahead and take a look. So off top, this is a really basic mat for a resume. Uh, I see that people got pictures on their resumes. They got souped up ones like that. Uh, do your research on that. I seen somewhere that those kind of resumes get rejected, but this is just a basic format. When I was going to college, I got those little resume helper people and they're the ones who picked the format and pretty much put this together. So basically it's your name, 
You know saying I ain't gonna put the government out there, you know what I mean? I ain't gonna put the government out there, but yeah, there. Then my my email address definitely holla at me on the email address if y'all need any help or whatever. And then the phone number, you ain't gonna put that. And then your phone number, pretty simple. Email address. Make sure you don't got hotbooty at gmail.com or whatever. You know them crazy kind of emails or like Dragon Slayer two 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 whatever. You know them crazy kind of emails. So make sure that should go without saying. I can't believe that people are still doing that. Just get you a regular email. It's not that hard. And then right here we got profile. So again, this was by these people, the, the volunteers and the career development part of the college, of a community college. Uh, maybe you could go up there and holler at them or somebody that's going to college, give them your resume. I don't know. You got to think outside the box if you're trying to get it how you live. You dig? So this says profile. Again, I didn't come up with none of this stuff. They came up with it, but it, it sounded it sounded real smooth. It just says network engineer with a strong ability to multitask, manage time and work under pressure to meet tight deadlines, skilled in communicating. Uh, Use chat GPT, use whatever you want. I use these people. Use a professional resume editor, whatever you want, but make sure that you have a profile on there. Or at least this is what I use. Uh, and I've been using this one for years. It's been getting me jobs. Uh, recruiters hit me up. It's, it's posted online. Recruiters hit me up off of it. Uh, experience is a little bit different. You know what I'm I've been doing it a little bit longer, so it's gonna be a little bit different. You might not get a lot of hits if you've only got zero to one year experience, but this is you five to ten years down the road this is what it should look like if you don't want to worry about your resume and getting jobs because definitely god first that's the only reason why i got the jobs that i got but you feel me it's also because of this resume that's the only way that people are going to get at me is through a resume word of mouth or something like that so next thing is the skills routing and switching cisco and juniper software you always want to put that you use basic microsoft word excel if you don't know powerpoint and outlook and stuff you need to know these things operating systems i know cali ubuntu these are things i'm not 10 out of 10 on cali i'm not 10 out of 10 on ubuntu but i definitely took last year and got it. i'm at live out of 10 so i could talk about some stuff i could talk about the file system for linux and i could talk about that cali is just a distro of ubuntu and it's just I got security tools and it's just for pen testing or cyber security and that's what that distro was built for but again you don't have to be a 10 out of 10 you just got to talk about it and these are just the operating systems that i know and then this is something that i tried to do that i put on my application last year that i'm gonna leave there i haven't tried to apply to any kind of a stock analyst or anything like that but when i do i'm definitely gonna leave this for cyber security try hack me this is my public profile Y'all could tap in with me right there. You know what I'm saying? If you could see that. Hackme.com, Network Ninja, whatever. And then I just put, this is me putting all of this. This is not even uh, no help from resume editors or anything. I just put this little section in here. Because they had skills. They had Cisco and Juniper. But I'm developing skills. So why not add that? I'm trying to market myself. I'm trying to sell myself to these employers. And if I'm going up against somebody and they don't have no try hack me profile where they could say, oh, this guy's doing things with cross site scripting in these room. I might not be a 10 out of 10 expert, but if you put me up against somebody that has no experience with it, it's definitely going to help me out. This says I gained tremendous amount of lab experience for all of those that are saying, hey, I don't want to put lab experience. I'm putting it right here. Lab experience with the core principles of a SOC analyst. I got I don't have production experience of a SOC analyst, but I got lab experience. So put me toe to toe with them. I'll go toe to toe with the SOC analyst with my lab experience versus they real world. They better been doing their studying. You feel me? So you got to put that kind of stuff on there. I developed skills with network traffic analysis with tools like Snort and Wireshark. Just from being on that Try Hack Me platform, it's free. Go out there and try it if you want to learn about Snort and, and these things because you're going to run out. You're going to run into Wireshark. So you might as well be familiar with it. Put in the time, put in the work after you're studying the CCNA. CCNA doesn't teach you how to do Wireshark and work with Snort. So that, take those projects and put that on yourself. Let's keep it moving. Got the education, put the associate's degrees, the certifications. I put recertified November 2022 because it's active. It's on there. Definitely going to, um, I want, let me know in the comments, um, Made it this far. Thank you for tapping in. Let me know in the comments if you want to see all the scores. I failed the Cisco eight times, uh, the CCNA eight times. 
So don't let me sit up here preaching like I'm a Cisco ex expert. No, I'm just somebody that will not stop. I'm going to keep on studying. I'm going to keep getting the certifications and I'm just not going to stop no matter what. But if you want to see how many times I failed the NRC um, last year or something, I'm going to take it again. If y'all want to see all my little badges, all my little certifications, the A-plus certification, the Juniper, drop it, um, put it in the comments below, and I'll put together a little video and just show y'all a quick little video of all of that, the accomplishments and stuff, and the certifications. All right, moving on. You got employment history, put whatever, black network engineer. Okay, these are the skills that I got, right? Um, at what? Doing day-to-day -day troubleshooting. You want to put troubleshooting on there? I got firewall on there. Now, I'm not putting these things, like I said, I'm not putting keyword network security. I'm just putting, but, and this is just for me because I have worked with firewall rules, um, checkpoint and Cisco ASAs and stuff like that. Um, work with F5 LTMs. But as far as you go, if you've dealt with firewalls, you need to put that on there. Or if you've dealt with any kind of network security, if it's VPNs, again, it could be the technology. If you've dealt with it, you need to put it on there so that it catches those key words of that system so you don't get rejected. Uh, here again, I got some T1s, DS3s, OC3s. Uh, what else did I put here? Oh, developed SOPs, documented well-known processes for my team, SD-WAN solution. These are kind of things that I'm putting on there. Um, and then seven years working in a technical environment, troubleshooting again. So understanding of routing protocols. See that I really didn't put no network configuration on there, but I did put some administration stuff on there as far as the stuff as working with um, SOPs and the troubleshooting. Those are the administration skills. So, so far I've got administration skills, network configuration and administration skills. I got the network security skills as well and i also have the network monitoring skills because i put that i'm supporting these networks not specifically what network monitoring tools maybe i need to put that that's something that i can include and look if you're not updating your resume every year then it's going to be outdated so a rule of thumb just get it updated every year if you're in the not in the job market obviously you don't have to update it but if you aren't in the job market and you haven't updated or if you are in the job market sorry and you haven't updated your resume in years you might need to do that because that's another thing that you can do you can tailor it to the specific job descriptions which leads me into what we're going to look into right now um, right after this is the job description so the last thing I want to show y'all here is the accomplishments I got Cisco certified Encore currency link again these are the link to the badges of all my different certs so when they click this link they're going to see the one for encore they're going to see the one for ccna they're going to see the one for a plus it's through a company called credly and they have these digital badges that are the same just showing the person that i i passed the test or whatever or showing the employer uh if you're not up on credly definitely um let me know in the comments i'll drop it and i'll show y'all the whole thing i'll drop a video but um this is something else important that you want to put on your accomplishments. Uh, put the NRC, but I put in progress here, letting them know I'm pursuing this. So if you don't hire me, you're going to be missing out on a potential CCMP because I already got the encore. I already got that. So it's like, do you want to miss out on somebody that got all this experience plus is still in progress? So that's basically that. Let's go ahead and look at the job description now. All right, here we're on Indeed.com. You guys can use LinkedIn. You guys can use any kind of job board. Um, if you're going after these job boards, be careful. Try not to target these big tech companies. Try to find somebody small um, you can or any, anything like that. Just don't have to land some big tech company right out the gate. But um, I, I also want to pull this up for people that are searching for CCNA jobs that I just put CCNA and I put remote. And we got 200 plus jobs. Now, that's definitely not a lot of jobs. If I put Security Plus in there, it's going to be thousands more. Um, 200 plus jobs. And this is just remote, right? That's just my preference because I want to be remote. So maybe there's not a lot of remote work. But 200 plus jobs, you should be able to get something. And what we're looking at is Network Engineer right here. And this projected compensation range for this position is 68,000 to 113,000 68 on the low end if you're just coming in right with your ccna or something no experience because this is for a junior network engineer 
and your remote and then high end 113,000 if you got 10 years experience and all of this debt and all of the everything like that. So let's get down to the skills of what they want you to do. All right, so you see the responsibilities that are included, assist in design and implementation, um, work under the guidance of senior engineers, assist in configuration, like I said, network configuration and administration, assist in configuration, installation and maintenance of network devices such as routers, switches, firewalls, that network security stuff, troubleshoot network issues, analyze logs, and implement corrective actions to ensure smooth network operation. This is your administration skill in monitoring network security events. So monitoring and network security events, you know, both right in there. Network security, again, they mentioned it again in there. So all of these things are on there. You see it in this job description. If you look at any of these other job descriptions, it's gonna be in there. Something that has to do with network configuration and administration. It's gonna to have to do with something with network monitoring or optimizing performance with the network. These are skills that are gonna be on every job description or these are requirements or responsibilities that they're gonna want you to do on pretty much every job out there. So hopefully that helps and hopefully we can see that my resume I definitely I would doctor it up right I would say that I've assisted in but I would make it to where it's pretty much mirroring what they're looking for that way it just gives me that better chance all right y'all before we get out of here if you stuck around long enough again thank you so much for locking in with me for this long and sticking to the video till this much but we're pretty much at the end and like I mentioned at the beginning of the video I wanted to share that one key skill that I believe um, even better than these skills that I put on the resume those are all good to have but you need to develop the key skill of networking and maybe you don't have to go to a networking event but network and get around people that are in IT and that are killing it in IT try to find a way I don't know how you're gonna do that I'm trying to do that myself um, find people that are in cybersecurity and killing it so I have to cold email people that I follow on YouTube or whatever the case may be or maybe I see something that they post on LinkedIn or something you gotta reach out to people that are inspiring you if it's me reach out to me right and start building that network that way you give your resume to somebody because I'm pretty sure I didn't look up these statistics, but I think if you give your resume to somebody, you know, networking that you knew somebody that you know somebody, I think those resumes are the ones that are getting to the hiring managers better. And most of my jobs have been word of mouth. It hasn't been that, oh, I just put in a resume and then boom. Like when I first started, yes, that's how it was. I put in a resume, I put in them thousand applications. But I'm telling you, five to 10 years down the road, it's gonna be word of mouth, it's gonna be reputation. Um, so definitely have a good rep out here. Make sure you're doing, even if it's because you don't know. Um, one of my bosses at my old job ended up owning a company uh, 10 years later and then ended up hiring me to work for him. So you never know who you're working with. So and your reputation precedes you. So then that, that's what helped me get that job. I didn't even have to put a resume in there. Right. Uh, when he had his own company, he's just like, hey, I already know you. So just come work for me, right? Um, and that's just because I have experience in the field and everything like that. So don't be frustrated if you're just started out. Of course, you're not gonna know nobody yet in the industry or anything like that. But my key thing is, is that don't just rely on sending your resume in. That's not the only way to get a job. You need to talk to people. You need to network with people. Go to these networking events if you have to if you don't know anybody that's in it but you need to start getting around there's meetups there's local meetups there's social media facebook groups all of these kind of things you need to start networking with the people surround yourself with the people that are in tech and more importantly people that are killing it people that you are aspiring to be don't just network with people that aren't even that got into tech luckily and they don't even care about it if that's something that you you're trying to grow and you're trying to get more you don't want to be around that so hopefully that little tip helped all right again that wraps it up for this one again appreciate y'all for tapping in with me and sticking around this long let me know in the comments did you guys already have these skills on your resume um are you going to include them let me know in the comments or if you do include them let me know how it works out if you do get a job or something to find out hope really hope that it helps out um 
for me i don't have to use my resume but if i ever did i'm definitely going to be having those key skills on there just like how i have my resume and i'm gonna be updating it yearly making sure it's up to date that way and i'm going to be networking with people right uh to make sure that i have the best uh, to put myself in the best position to go ahead and get any kind of job that I am desiring. Hopefully you guys found some value in this content. If you did go ahead and drop a like that thumbs up, share the video to anybody that may need help that you're struggling comment. And, um, if you're not subscribed to, so you don't miss next week's video and that's where I'm gonna catch y'all. You already know I'm gonna holla at y'all. Peace.